Congratulations. You've reached the light at the end of the tunnel. And when you first arrived at Smith four years ago, I'm sure you never imagined that at the end of that tunnel, there would be a lady behind a podium talking to you in a funny accent. <laughs> this accent has been the bane of my existence until in 1980, I moved to New York from England and I met Henry Kissinger. And he said to me, don't ever worry about your accent. In American public life, you can never underestimate the advantages of complete and total incomprehensibility. <laughs> <coughs> I'm so grateful to be with you at this very special moment. You don't know it, but I have spent the last few weeks stalking you. <laughs> on your Smith websites, on your Twitter feeds, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Tumblr, so I could get to know you better. So here's what I have found. You are fascinating and curious and quirky and asking the big questions and worrying about the little things and solving the cosmic riddles and agonizing about what shoes to wear at commencement. <laughs> I've learned about Smithies writing honors thesis on subjects that I don't only understand, but I can't even pronounce. <laughs> like Lisa Stephanie Condon's thesis on entro... Hi, Lisa. I want you to hear her thesis pronounced in a Greek accent <laughs> on entropy and enthalpy contributions to the chelate effect. <laughs> I've learned about the three seniors who were part of the basketball team, which made the Division III NCAA tournament. <laughs> Storic accomplishment to add to your already lots of fans for them. A historic accomplishment to add to your already historic status as the birthplace of women's basketball. I've learned about the many Smithies who will be the first in their families to graduate from college. Like Maciel de los Santos, who began her journey in the Dominican Republic. So before I go any further, because I've been so impressed, I feel compelled to extend to all of you, graduating class of 2013, a lifelong invitation to blog on the Huffington Post. <laughs> <clears throat> about your graduation and about all your adventures on the next stage of the journey you are starting today. And in order to bypass the growing Huffington Post bureaucracy, I'm going to give you right now my email address, <laughs> ariana at huffingtonpost.com, and you can send it directly to me and get a password for life. <laughs> <coughs> Getting to know you has made me feel very protective of you, especially because I have two daughters who are about your age, college age kids. And it has also made me realize that you don't need protection because you're absolutely ready and prepared to take on the world. And if you have attended the virtual center for work and life, you even have a passport to life after Smith. <laughs> with the opportunity to learn things like job interviewing skills, how to balance a budget, cook a healthy meal, and even change a tire. <laughs> so you can consider my speech today a continuation of the passport to life after Smith. Though, in the interest of full disclosure, I can't cook and definitely cannot change a tire. <laughs> but part of life after Smith will be deciding what things do you want to put your energy into and what things you don't. It was a big revelation for me when I realized that I didn't have to complete everything I thought I wanted to do, like learning German or becoming a good skier or learning to cook. Indeed, I realized that you can complete a project by dropping it. Now, commencement speakers are traditionally expected to tell graduates 
how to get out there and climb the ladder of success. But I want to ask you instead to redefine success because the world you're headed into desperately needs it and because you're up to it. Your education at Smith has made it unequivocally clear that you're entitled to take your place in the world on equal footing in every field and at the top of every field. But what I urge you to do is not just to take your place at the top of the world, but to change the world. What I urge you to do is to lead the third women's revolution. The first was led by the suffragists over a hundred years ago, when brave women like Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton fought, among other things, to give women the right to vote. The second women's revolution was powerfully led by Smith alumni, Betty Friedan and Gloria Steinem. They fought, and Gloria continues to fight, <clears throat> to expand the role of women in our society, to give us full access to the rooms of power where decisions are being made. And while the second revolution is still in progress, we simply cannot wait any longer for the third revolution to begin. And I can't imagine a place where I would be more likely to find the leaders of that revolution than right here at Smith. <clears throat> At the moment, our society's notion of success is largely composed of two parts, money and power. In fact, success, money, and power have practically become synonymous. But it's time for a third metric beyond money and power, one founded on well-being, wisdom, our ability to wonder and to give back. <clears throat> You know, money and power by themselves are like a two-legged stool. You can't balance on them for a while, but eventually you're going to topple over. And more and more people, very successful people, are toppling over every day. Basically, success, the way we've defined it, is no longer sustainable. It's not sustainable for human beings. It's not sustainable for the planet. <clears throat> to live the lives we want and not just the lives we settle for, the lives according to society's definition of success, we need to include